welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Ariana Katovich, and Ariana is Executive Director of the Wildlife Care Network. Welcome, Ariana. Hi, thanks for having me, Cinder. It's nice yeah. to be here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You have so much to tell, I know, because your organization does so much important work. And so please tell us, and you've grown a lot, I know, in yeah, the past. Yeah. So please tell us what you're up to today. Okay. Well, Wildlife Care Network is our community's wildlife rehabilitation and rescue organization. We operate in all of Santa Barbara and Ventura County, so we have a big service area. And we get between 3,500 and 4,500 animals a year uh, of 220-ish different species. So songbirds, seabird, all kinds of mammals, sometimes reptiles, amphibians. We even had a couple tarantulas this oh, year. <laughs> so, you know, we never really know what's coming through our doors um, at any given time, you know, of the year. But we're open, you know, in our community, 365 days of the year to rescue and rehabilitate wildlife. So anytime mm -hmm. that someone, okay, so tell me how it works. Somebody sees, this is how it typically goes, somebody sees um, a, a wildlife in trouble mm -hmm. and they call you or they mm -hmm. pick it up and take it to you? Or right. How does that work? Yeah, so usually members of the public are the ones that are finding animals and bringing them to us. And what usually happens is they may see, you know, an injured pelican or an orphan little hummingbird or something like that, and they call our helpline. Okay. And our helpline is open seven days a week from nine to five. We have a whole volunteer crew that answers the helpline, and we will either walk those members of the public through how to get the animal to us, mm -hmm. or we will send out a volunteer rescuer uh, to actually go pick it up. And in some cases, we will instruct the member of the public to call animal control. So if someone finds a bat or a raccoon or a skunk, oh, oh. something in that <laughs> genre of mammal, then they, yeah. they need to call animal control who can help get it. And sometimes, you know, someone finds an injured hawk. That's a very intimidating animal <laughs> to oh, yeah. capture. So we'll send someone out to do that. Gosh. Yeah. So. <laughs> so do, does animal control then sometimes call you, come fix this raccoon? Animal control and, and Santa Barbara Wildlife Care Network have a, a strong relationship. And so they often bring us animals for treatment. So any wild animal that can be treated, we um, have a good relationship with the officers and we see them in our parking lot frequently yeah. uh, with drop-offs, yeah. But it's better for animal control to pick up certain kinds of animals because there's a special way to yeah. capture them. Yeah, sometimes, you know, safe capture is really important. And um, because we work in wildlife, we also work with animals that have potential disease, like rabies, for example. Oh, yes. So that would be raccoon, um, skunk, bat, fox, uh, you know, coyote, any, any one of those what we consider to be a rabies vector oh. animal. So you don't want to touch them with your bare hands. Um, and you certainly want to call in an expert. So what we tell everyone is just call us, just call our helpline no matter what you find and we'll walk you through it. Yeah. That's, I, I knew about bats, of course, with yeah. the rabies thing, but yeah. I didn't know about those other animals. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to scare you. I mean, the incidence of these things are very low, yeah. but we take those precautions very seriously, you know, and so yes, better to be safe than, than sorry in any way. Gosh, yeah. and so you're open all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you serve both counties, so you have offices in both counties? We have one location where we're uh, located um, in the foothills of Goleta. Okay. We have a brand new wildlife hospital, which we're very excited about. Uh, and you know, with that comes our veterinary program and some of these other incredible things um, that we're able to do at our facility. But we're located in Goleta, so we have an incredible transport network of oh. volunteers out of Ventura, from the North County that, that get animals to us. And then actually we have to go back to those places to release the animals oh. when they're ready to go free and back into the wild. Gosh, 
gosh. So I read about that hospital. Mm. Congratulations. Thank you did you. a capital campaign to make yeah. that possible. Yeah, we did a big capital campaign. You know, it's always the vision, I think, of our founders. And we're 35 years old this year. So oh, it was the vision of our founders to have a wildlife hospital. And for many years, the organization operated out of people's homes. Mm -hmm. And then um, I actually rescued a crow when I was 18 years old as a student at UCSB and brought it to a tiny little place on Garden Street. And uh, the organization you know, did a capital campaign to purchase a property in Goleta over a decade ago. And, and then we built you know, a state-of-the-art wildlife hospital during COVID, really. Oh, uh, and you know, just incredible generosity. Um, you know, we operate 100% on generosity for our general operations and for the capital campaign. And, you know, seeing the up-leveling of um, the facility and our ability to care for animals is really staggering. You know, we have a dedicated, we used to do everything in one room, mm -hmm. you know, intake, laundry, dishes, medications, uh, you know, oil washing, um, all of our seabirds, everything was in one little building. And now we have a purposeful room, you know, for songbirds uh, with specialized lighting just for them and, and temperature control. And we have an old, whole seabird a wing that is, you know, made to uh, de-oil animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a mammal nursery and a surgical suite and radiology and just all of these things that were not really possible before. So we can do more for the animals. We can do it faster. You know, if an animal comes in with a, a broken wing, we can x-ray it right then and there, oh, gosh. do diagnostic tests. And we have a, a very capable and wonderful veterinary team that, you know, can, can do incredible treatment. So it's really been a huge advancement for the organization. And I would say just, a, you know, what I see every day, to be honest, is people who are just desperate to find help for an animal that they mm. have found. I mean, it is, it's stressful, you know, yeah. to find a, um, a, a pelican with a hook or line entanglement, yeah. or to find that little featherless baby bird on the ground, or, you know, the, the orphaned possum, you know? And yeah. it's, it's so important, you know, for that person to know where to go and find the help. And then I get to see how relieved they are mm -hmm. to bring it to us. Yeah. And then I feel just in incredibly grateful to be able now to have this enhanced service, you know, so that we really are truly giving these animals what they deserve. Gosh, and you do all this through tax deductible donations. <laughs> right, we, we operate on generosity. That is yeah. amazing. And is. so um, being a 501c3, uh, you do accept um, tax deductible donations mm -hmm. and a person can go on your website and I bet you have a donate now <laughs> button. Yeah, of course we do. Yeah, we have uh, a lot of ways to donate on our website. Um, people can, you know, make a one-time contribution. Um, people can, you know, give us to us monthly. Uh, we have a legacy program oh. and people can even shop our wish list on Amazon, oh. which is really, you know, actually a huge amount of support for us. We go through so much supplies, you know, all these animals need, you know, bandages and heating pads and enclosures. And we've had donors buy incubators for us or sponsor the worms for the year. Um, yeah. So like our songbird team, you know, songbirds, I would say, is, a, is one of the busiest rooms in our spring baby season, right? We, we, animals have their babies in the spring. And so we get lots of baby birds, and there can be up to 100 baby birds in the songbird room. And all those babies have to be fed every 20 to 30 minutes from dawn until dusk. Oh my gosh. And it comes to thousands of feedings a day. And they all eat, you know, um, high protein, you know, uh, diets, that means insects. And they are offered whatever their diet requires, seeds or nuts or fruits or nectar or whatever that may be. And so all of that really adds up for us. So yes. it's fun to see people kind of shop our wish list for us and 
get things in the mail. That is yeah. a great idea yeah. to shop Amazon. <laughs> right, yeah. Wildlife Care Network. Right, exactly. I can see that would be a big help, though. It is. It's enormous, you know, to be able to have support coming from all forms. Yeah. Uh, and we honor all of our donors. And, you know, Network is in the name of our organization mm -hmm. for a very specific reason because it takes this incredible network of community members that are rescuing animals, you know, that have com the compassion, mm -hmm. um, which is a lot of people, and our network of volunteers, which, you know, um, donate time to us. You know, we have about 100, at least, regular volunteers. Oh. And those are people that give us, you know, four hours a week of their time oh. to do a variety of things. And they're not clean jobs, usually. They're, you know, yeah. cleaning cages and, you know, washing dishes and doing the laundry and um, answering the phone and, and rescuing animals. And so that's another wonderful way that people can really donate to us is, is through their time. Um, and we're always accepting, you know, new volunteer applications. Mm -hmm. So our network is very broad, you know, between yeah. our donors and our rescuers and our volunteers and, you know, and our staff. And your staff, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So if a person wants to volunteer, they can go on your website and find mm -hmm. out how to do that. Yeah. And then do you train them in how to take mm -hmm. care of these animals? Yeah, so we uh, have a volunteer tab on our website. People fill out an application and then they get followed up with and we'll do an orientation and we do give them training based on kind of where they're selecting to, to volunteer. And uh, we have training videos and um, you know, things written down, and then we also walk people through the center and show them the steps. And we have volunteers that, you know, drop in for, you know, like we had this pelican crisis last year. Mm -hmm. We had 250 people show up to help us out, you know, during this really stressful month. And then we have volunteers that have been with us for years, mm -hmm. you know, that start, you know, they start washing dishes and then before you know it, they're, you know, tube feeding a pelican, you know, with our oh, staff. Gosh. So there's, um, there's a lot of ways for people to really, you know, be involved and stay involved in our organization. So it sounds like people are going to go on the website and <laughs> get themselves involved. Yeah, we just... hope so. So let's go back to your hospital. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a picture of it on your website. Mm -hmm. Congratulations again. Mm -hmm. um, so you have staff there, some of whom are veterinarians, or mm -hmm. veterinarian staff, I think you called them. Yeah, so we have a veterinarian, director of veterinary services, uh, Dr. Alderetta, and she uh, really manages every aspect of our medical care. It's fairly unique, and as far as wildlife centers go, to have a full-time vet on oh. staff, but because of that, you know, we can do so much and so she has veterinary assistants that help her and then she also works very closely with you know our director of rehabilitation and our animal care staff to learn how to do a variety um, of techniques and procedures under her supervision so uh, our staff by having a veterinarian on our team mm -hmm. can do so much more and learn so much more um, so it's it's really been a huge enrichment piece to our program and our offering. Almost like a teaching hospital. It, yeah, yeah, in some ways, yeah. And, you know, through, through that, we can offer veterinary internships and externships. So hopeful veterinarians, uh, yes. folks that are studying in vet school currently or, um, you know, want, are, you know, licensed vets that want to receive this very special training mm -hmm. in wildlife medicine. Uh, which is yeah. a very niche, you know, piece of being a vet. Um, you know, so they can all they can all come to us for that as well and apply to be part of those programs. That's great. So, yeah, I was going to ask you. So, <laughs> what's the difference in a, you know, what we think of as a regular veterinarian yeah. and one that specifically takes care of wildlife? Right. Well, you know, uh, of course, you know, uh, we a lot of us have our pets and our dogs and cats or you know even horses, and you know, there are uh, veterinarians that kind of specialize in general veterinary medicine, and there are, you know, the folks that you see with the clinics around town. And then there's this sort of um, wildlife veterinary, you know, subset of being uh, a DVM. And, you know, these people are dedicated to wildlife medicine. And we don't, in our world, we don't mix domestic pets and wildlife or even exotic animals 
and wildlife. Wildlife is its own kettle of fish, if you will, yeah, right? Exactly. And so um, it's an emerging field. It's not as established, say, mm -hmm. as I would say, you know, um, small animal medicine. Um, and so it's this kind of new and evolving field. And so I think it's exciting for someone who really wants to focus on wildlife, one, because you never know what's coming through the door, you know? Right. Um, and so it really takes, I think, a specific person and mentality. And, mm -hmm. you know, we could have a bobcat. It could be 13 baby possums. It could be um, 30 pelicans. And sometimes all at once, you know? And so their day is like, I admire that her so much and the team, actually the entire team, because the way that they have to manage their time and prioritize their tasks. And it's, it's really something, it's a unique privilege to see actually Gosh. up close. Yeah. Ariana, I bet you have a story or two you could <laughs> share with us. Oh my gosh, there's so many. I, I hardly know where to begin. Um, you know, I will say that we, as I said, we never really know what's coming. And, um, you know, we're open 365 days of the year and holidays and all of that. And so it was a Labor Day weekend. And uh, one of our volunteers was alerted that there was a fox uh, trapped in a um, tube, like it had been hunting and it got its head just firmly stuck um, in a tube. And um, our team went out to assess the fox, including our veterinarian. And what they ended up doing was sedating the fox oh. and getting the tube off of its head, um, cutting the tube off of its head and making sure that there wasn't anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually, I believe, also treated him for parasites and, oh. you know, fleas and some other things. <laughs> give him um, a little back. Give him a, like yeah, <laughs> a little, little tune-up for that fox. <laughs> but, but, you know, make sure nothing was, you know, amiss. And then they were able to, like, release it back into the wild. And um, that was a pretty quick turnaround. You know, it just happened in the same day, really. But yeah. sometimes we see these other really dramatic stories, you know, um, there's a great horned owl in our care, you know, right now, mm. actually, that um, had a skin graft um, for a, a very, you know, um, deep wound. Um, and that animal's been in our care probably over 20 days at this point. And so we see these really interesting stories, you know, and um, I'll share one more, which is, I mean, I work in this work, you know, it's my life and I've done this now since 2017. And I was walking through the center and I saw one of our staff walking with a hummingbird in a enclosure, oh. soft-sided enclosure. And I said, oh, are you gonna go put the hummingbird in the aviary? Because we have an outdoor aviary where these songbirds, after they've been in our kind of nursery, get mm -hmm. to go out and fly and you know um, find forage and th other things. We, we have to observe them kind of in an outdoor environment before we can release them. And so I followed her in to the aviary and she unzipped the enclosure. And I said, is this the first time the sun has hit this animal? And she said, yeah, I, yeah. And it was just this like, even I've been doing this work for so long, but this moment of, wow, like we are, we, we you know, we had to kind of teach this animal to, how to fly and you know, grow it up from being this tiny little featherless baby to now watching the sun hit it for the first time. Oh and my gosh. it just kind of got out of the cage and just sat in the sun for a minute, you know? And it was like we were all feeling that moment for this little bird. And then the hummingbird just, of course, you know, went up and found its nectar that was placed all yeah. around the enclosure. But it really, I don't know, it was just this kind of moment of like, wow, we really do this really like hopeful, joyful, you know, work as hard as it is, and it is hard, you know, it is also incredibly rewarding. I bet it is. <laughs> How long have you, you've been doing it for what, six years then? Yeah, yeah, I came on at the end of 2017. And yeah. so um, what drew you to this work? <laughs> well, you know, I've always, um, I gravitated toward, you know, nonprofit work and, um, you know, caring for my community and, I was introduced, you know, to, to Wildlife Care Network. They were hiring, and I um, responded, you know, to the ad and met the board. And um, the board president asked me to come out to the center. 
And so I went out to the center. And at that time, it was like this little building, mm-hmm. and they have some outdoor aviaries and some seabird pools. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I mean, you know, kitchen was in a shed. The office trailer was also the songbird area, and the bathroom kind of doubled as a kitchen. And <laughs> there was no place for me to sit. I actually bought a picnic table from the thrift store and sat out in a field, you know, and yeah. with an umbrella and worked where I could get Wi Fi. And, you know, I just got that sense when I walked through the property with the the board president that they really could use some help, you know, and I could see myself helping. And I just had this big sense of possibility. And now that we have the hospital and the vet team and all of these things in place, I see possibility again. Oh, gosh. You know? Oh, well, I say they're so lucky. We're all so lucky to have you. Thank you, Cinder. I feel blessed to be you know, where I am and working with such a hardworking team of people and getting to see these incredible creatures, you know, up close. It's, it is a unique privilege and it's one I definitely don't take for granted. Yeah, I can tell you are right where you belong. (laughs) Thank you so much for Uh, all of your good work and for coming on our show to share with our audience. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus and we'll see you next time.